As the end of 2024 nears, it's time to round up the best CPUs currently on the market because that's what you do at the end of the year, right? You get together with your family and you pick your favorite CPUs. And that being the case, I've spent quite a bit of time working out some answers for you. But before we get to that, today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Hetzna, a leading host provider and data center operator in Europe. By combining new technology, affordable pricing, and competent in-house support, Hetzner is a reliable and strong partner for professional infrastructure and has been since 1997. Along with their locations across the US and most recently Singapore, they also operate their own state-of-the-art centers in Germany and Finland. Hetzner serves a powerful, affordable, GDPR compliant and are becoming more accessible for personal and business use. Alongside their Euro payment option, they're offering dollar payments for new accounts. So to learn more about what Hetzner has to offer, please check the link in the video description. Okay, so we've got five CPU categories that I've made up, and I think they do a good job of covering the market from top to bottom. Though, I have to warn you, there is no 5800X3D or even 7800X3D. So that's going to get a few dislikes in advance. Starting with the cheapest option, my recommendation for the entry level CPU depends on whether or not you're just upgrading your CPU, motherboard and memory opposed to building an entirely new PC as the budgets there are quite different. Now, if you're just upgrading your platform, the most cost effective option right now, if you want to spend as little as possible, is the Intel Core i5-12400F. So again, this is the CPU that I'm recommending for those of you who want to spend as little money as possible and that also means going with DDR4 memory. In the past, I've recommended the Core i3-12100F, which currently costs just $75 US. But this is a quad-core model, and it is really starting to struggle in new games. So my advice is to spend a little bit extra on the 6-core 12400F, which can currently be had for $110 US. The Core i5-12400F has been one of Intel's most popular parts over the past few years, because it's both very affordable and adequately powerful. The only disadvantage here being that you're investing in a dead platform in LJ1700, and you really need to stick with the cheaper DDR4 memory for this to make sense. All up, you can purchase the 12400F, a 32 gigabyte kit of DDR4 memory and an LJ1700 motherboard for around $250 US. So that's pretty hard to beat. And the only alternative here would be AMD's AM4 platform, which is arguably the best PC platform we've ever seen. But the Ryzen 5 5600 also costs $110 and is slower than the Core i5, which is why I recommend the 12400F. Also, please note, there's no point investing any additional money in either Intel's LJ1700 or AMD's AM4 platforms. As I said, they're dead platforms at this point. So if you have more money to spend, you should be looking at a current platform. And speaking of which, let's look at one of those right now. Now, for those of you who still have a tight budget and are therefore after a cost-effective CPU, but you're building an entirely new PC and you hope to hold on to that PC for many years to come, then I would recommend investing just a little bit more money in the CPU, motherboard, and memory combo by going with the Ryzen 5 7600. Firstly, the 7600 is a substantially faster CPU than the Core i5-12400F, despite also being a six-core processor. When it comes to gaming, it's almost 20% faster. Now that's when arming the Core i5 with high-speed DDR5 memory. The margins grow to almost 30% if you do use DDR4 with the 12400F. Of course, the Ryzen 5 processor did cost a lot more, 80% more when comparing just the price of the CPU, and then 60% more when including the motherboard and memory prices. But for those building an entire budget PC, the 7600 ends up costing just 20% more, and we're talking about a $730 US budget for the Core i5, and $890 for the Ryzen 5. Meaning worst case, they offer the same cost per frame, you're just getting much more performance with the AMD system. Not only that, but you're buying into a platform that will age better. And this is in part thanks to the additional bandwidth that DDR5 memory offers, and it will almost certainly provide a solid upgrade path. 
Of course, you can use DDR5 memory with the 12400F, but that really just hurts the value of that part to the point where it doesn't really make financial sense. So the Ryzen 5 7600 or its cheaper cousin, the 7500F over on AliExpress are my budget recommendations for those of you building a new PC or after a modern platform upgrade. Also be aware if you're looking over on AliExpress, it's not just the Ryzen CPUs that are often cheaper, but right now you can also snap up the 12400F for just $80 US. The best value mid-range CPU in my opinion is the Ryzen 7 7700 or 7700X, I suppose whichever one of those is cheaper in your region, and right now they can be had for around $270 US. Now it is worth noting that in terms of cost per frame, the Core i5 14600K for $235 is a slightly better value deal, and the 14600KF at $220 is better again. So those Core i5 models are certainly an option, but I'd personally go with the Ryzen 7 for a few reasons. I think first and foremost, the LGA platform is, as I've said, dead. There's no real upgrade path for a 14600K, other than you know a 14900K, which really isn't that much faster for gaming, but it does cost a lot more and it uses even more power. The Ryzen 7 already has a decent upgrade path, and I foresee a future where the 9800X 3D is both plentiful and affordable. And we already know it's 30% faster, so that's pretty good. But there's also potential for future Ryzen processors on this platform to deliver even more performance, so that alone makes it appealing to me. But if we focus on the here and now, the gaming performance of the 14600K and 7700 are very comparable, but the 7700 consumes significantly less power and therefore generates a lot less heat, so it's pretty much a win-win there for AMD. As a side note, I'm sure there will be some people questioning why the Ryzen 5 7600X 3D wasn't picked as the best mid-range deal, but the reason for this one should be obvious, because it's quite simple really. The 7600X 3D is a Micro Center exclusive, so unless you can buy from Micro Center, you can't really get this CPU. Of course, if you can purchase from Micro Center, then the 7600X 3D is well worth looking at, as you can currently buy it for $300 US, and that's a small premium over the Ryzen 7 7700 7700X for what will typically be much better gaming performance. Finally, there's also the new Ryzen 5 9600X and Ryzen 7 9700X, but for gamers, both models represent poor value right now, given they are more expensive than the Zen 4 parts while offering no real performance advantage. <laughs> There's really no debating this one. The Ryzen 7 9800X 3D is hands down the best gaming CPU money can buy right now. That said, the only problem with the 9800X 3D is availability. At $480 US, it's not ridiculously expensive, despite the fact that it is the very best. And because of that, a lot of gamers want it. And because of that, more than a month after release, it's still extremely difficult to get your hands on one. The next best thing is the 7800X 3D, but that's also mostly out of stock these days and really not worth paying a premium for, so just be patient and wait for the 9800X 3D. And that's really the state of the PC hardware market in late 2024. Most products you don't want to buy because they kind of suck, and the few that don't suck, you can't buy because they're not in stock. It's almost like they need to make less products that suck and they'll sell more products. But it can't be that simple, can it? Anyway, as I said, the 9800X 3D is extremely popular right now because it's hands down the best of the best. And people do like the best, especially gamers. Truth be told though, as good as the 9800X 3D is, not everyone needs it. And for many gamers, my previous recommendation, the Ryzen 7 7700 or 7700X, will be just as good and probably a lot better in terms of value. This is because in many instances, gaming performance isn't CPU limited, but rather GPU limited. So when using a modern, powerful CPU, such as the Ryzen 7 7700, you're more often than not going to see your frame rate limited by your GPU well before your CPU. There are of course exceptions to this, and they mostly apply to competitive shooters along with some strategy, city builder, and turn-based games. 
But for the most part, gamers will find themselves GPU limited more often than not, so do keep that in mind. Okay, so it's time for the best productivity CPU, and there aren't too many options here. Really, it comes down to the Ryzen 9 7950X, the 9950X, or the Core Ultra 9 285K, and frankly, all three are excellent productivity CPUs. So which one will be best for you does likely come down to your particular workload or workloads, so you want to research which one works best for your use case. That said, it's pretty hard to go past the Ryzen 9 7950X right now, as it is in stock, and it's rather cheap at just under $500 US. Meanwhile, the 9950X, which is generally ever so slightly better, costs $600, but it's also in stock, so you can really have your pick of which one you want there. Alternatively, Intel does have the Core Ultra 9 285K, or rather technically has it, as it's been unavailable ever since release selling just a handful of units at the $630 US MSRP. And right now, if you want one, but you don't want to wait for stock to be replenished, you'll have to pay around $800 US, so please don't do that. The 285K can be faster than the 9950X, depending on the workload, so as I said, you'll have to look into that a bit further, seek out benchmarks for your particular applications. But with the way availability looks right now, it might just be easier to get yourself a 9950X, though do be aware, we're also expecting the 9950X 3D to arrive next month, so that might be worth waiting for, and it could also drive down prices of existing parts. So there you have it, my top five best CPU picks right now. There are a lot of CPUs currently on sale, significantly more than what was discussed here, but you can ignore the vast majority of them as they simply don't make sense for one reason or another, or the use case is just too niche. For example, I'm often asked if it's worth getting one of AMD's APUs, such as the Ryzen 7 8700G, Ryzen 5 8600G, or maybe even the 8500G. But for desktop users, especially those of you who plan on using a discrete GPU, they don't really make sense, mostly because the CPU portion is so weak. The 8600G, for example, is slightly cheaper than the Ryzen 5 7600, which is probably why so many of you are interested in it. But with half the available L3 cache, it's much slower. It also only has 16 usable PCIe 4.0 lanes instead of 24 PCIe 5.0 lanes. So you end up saving about 10% on the price of the processor, but in the process, sacrifice a good chunk of performance. Anyway, the point is there are almost countless options which can make CPU upgrades a bit daunting. So hopefully this video has helped you narrow down your choices. And if so, please do give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. We also have the join button or Patreon. If you want to become a Harbour Unbox member, you can access our exclusive Discord server for members only and ask about CPU upgrades and all that sort of stuff there. And myself, Tim, the rest of the awesome Harbour Unbox community will answer your questions and interact with you. We also have a live stream where we do that with members each month. Uh, what else do we have? Behind the scenes content, Q&A stuff, a lot of cool things there. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that's perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.